Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel as you see in the thumbnail. This is part 3 of what if Naruto got harem with Azula, Yue and Kotara. Before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe and also go and support the author, link in description. Naruto walked down the looming hallways of the ship, the last in line of the group of five, with a stray guard leading Ajula who was second in line to the bridge where the Admiral Zhao lay in eager wait for her arrival. The halls seemed endless to Naruto, every going forward and seemingly never ending, only to find one ending lead the beginning of yet another hallway. A maze made of steel, a labyrinth of iron made to float on the open sea. The pathways seemed press upon, shutting him in almost, slowly approaching with a malevolent intent to smother him. He knew full well that the arts of Genjutsu had long since been lost to the world he knew and that no shinobi trickery was casting the illusions he felt in the recess of his mind, his own worst enemy was himself. He had been on a ship before, but never one as large as the one he had now boarded. Whether it was the claustrophobic environment within itself or his anxiety at beginning his new life that stirred his emotions was unclear, but whatever the case he would continue amongst these steel paths as long as he had the strength to. Another minute passed before they reached their goal, a bead of sweat noticeably shimmering down the side of Naruto's forehead in anticipation. Their path finally stopped at a steel door, which the soldier gracefully opened and held open for Ajula and her party. After a brief stride, the Fire Princess and her companions found themselves in the room of a rather large command center for the ship. It was much more spacious than the narrow hallways that they had treaded beforehand, a perfect military checkpoint for overseeing a battle. The man at the front turned ever so slightly to see who had entered his den, only to turn full force when he saw the briefest glimpse of his highness, he then have a customary bow in respect to the prodigy daughter of the Fire Lord himself. The man before them was rugged in stature, wearing a military outfit that obviously befitted a role of importance and had a sense of indomitability to it. The top of his hair was in a bun, while the rest of it seemed to trace off into massive sideburns that adorned each side of his face. His eyes looked determined and fierce, a strong chin accompanied by an almost sadistic grin showed that this man meant business. He seemed to give a double take in Naruto's direction, as hazel eyes met an azure eye accompanied by a pale green one, the blue sphere shone with an almost animalistic slit to it. This man stared at Naruto for little more than five seconds in curiosity, but then he quickly redressed his interest to his princess before him. Princess Ajula, welcome the Fire Nation fleet. It is honored to have the prodigy child for Fire Lord Oze aboard my vessel. I must admit you have arrived earlier than expected, not that that is an inconvenience of course, I assume your trip went swiftly. The Admiral commented, earning a small smirk from Ajala and her friends in response. Even Naruto couldn't help but let out a small smile, knowing full well that Ajala's trip had been far from normal. We ran into some complications, but it was nothing I couldn't handle. If anything, the delay we encountered uncovered something most, interesting. Admiral Zhao, I'd like you to meet my newest companion and possibly the greatest ally to the Fire Nation, this is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, he will be a great addition for us to have on our raid on the Northern Water Tribe. Ajala announced proudly, as the long golden-haired boy stepped fully into the fray to meet the Admiral. They stared at each other for a moment or two, Zhao looking down the newcomer from top to bottom with almost inspecting eyes. Naruto stood still as a statue, not wanting to offend the military leader with any offbeat movement. I hope you take no offense to this boy, but you stand out like a sore thumb, your attire and most certainly your hair certainly mark you with a unique presence if I do say so myself. Tell me boy, where do you come from? You certainly do not look like a resident of the Fire Nation and your clothes bear no clear resemblance in affiliation to any of the other three nations. Zhao output casually, not once addressing Naruto by his name in the process. Naruto was slightly annoyed at being called a boy, he was far the past the age of a prepubescent stature, and there was of course the further irony that he was thousands of years older than the man who addressed him as a boy. The sage chose to hide his slight irritation however, instead maintain a small smile that hid any ill will. Tai Li went to open her mouth but her ma was quickly covered by Mai's right hand as a muffled string of sentences whispered their way out of the cracks between Mai's fingers. An eyebrow of Zhao's raised in confusion, only to have Ajala step forward and address the situation. Admiral Zhao, 
the matter of how I met Naruto and where he's from is, complicated, to say the least. For now, you'll just have to take my word that Naruto is indeed a powerful ally to be had, these words come from the prodigy child of the Fire Lord, you need not doubt them. He has abilities and powers I have never witnessed before, he has done things I thought not possible, even in regards to an avatar. Ashila calmly claimed, earning a look of piqued curiosity from Zhao who looked at Naruto with much interest. He cupped his chin with his left hand, only for a moment of thought before he respectfully replied. Indeed? The princess prodigy of the Fire Nation gives her support to this strange newcomer? I am not one to doubt the royal family's will ancestors be praised, however, you would not be offended if I said your claims were just a bit superstitious, my princess. If this man is to be such an important asset to this battle as you claim, I respectfully ask of him to show me some of these powers of yours that even you have not seen before, your highness. After all, if this man is to be our newfound ally, I must see at least a fragment of his abilities firsthand. I do not doubt your words Princess Ajala, but I must see at least a portion of it for myself. Zhao concluded, drawing small glare from Ajala in the process, something my entirely couldn't help but back up a few paces upon seeing. Zhao wasn't meaning to sound disrespectful, he implored more than enough that he meant the utmost respect for Ajala's reverence, but questioning the royal in any way was often looked upon as heresy by the people of the Fire Nation. Naruto smirked casually his fingers moving like spiders in preparation for what he was about to do. If the admiral wanted a small display of power, he would get it, but since he didn't specify about he wanted it, the next move would be all the more satisfying. Performing a few hand signals in front of the group, Naruto extended his right palm openly at Zhao after the signs were performed, causing Zhao to back up a bit in anticipation. But no matter how he prepared himself, the admiral would have never known what would come next. Jurioku Suteru Jutsu, Teimuzu Fafuden at Tsurioku. And with those simple words Zhao literally plummeted to the steel form below, an illicit gasp of surprise escaped the mouth of Tai Li, while Ajala and Mai watched in amazement as the admiral lay completely down the floor, not even on his knees, but like he had just lied down for a rest. The same thing occurred to all the fellow soldiers stationed in the same direction of the room where Zhao now lay on the floor they too hit the ground faster than anyone ever could have thought possible. Many of the soldiers panicked, while Zhao was trying to force himself up, but to no avail. His muscles strained under an invisible force, he couldn't bring himself to his knees let alone stand. After a minute or two of pointless struggling that amused Ajala as she held back a cruel snicker, he finally had the strength to speak again. WWW what d did you d do boy? I see C can't he move an inch of M my body, nothing's RR responding like it should. Naruto rolled his eyes as he prepared to blow Zhao's mind and understanding of power. If I may interject Admiral, what I did was simply increase the gravity of your side of the premises by 15 times, what you and some of your crew are now experiencing is 15 times the normal gravity of Earth, if I applied any more pressure all of you might spontaneously combust. Naruto smirked earning a grim smirk from Ajala and the widened eyes of Mai and Tai Li. Some of the soldiers started struggling even more so due to Naruto's explanation, desperately seeking a way off the ground, to which Naruto could only shrug at their ignorance. BBB but, how can one side of the RR room be 15 t times the gravity of the other s side of the R room? That dd defies the LL laws of P physics. I have control over what is unnatural in the eyes of your people Admiral Zhao. Reality is mine to bend as I see fit, I have the power to make nearly anything I want possible. For example, Jurioku Suteru Jutsu, Zero Purisha. And then what was little more than an instant, Zhao and his men literally began to float in the air, with even less control than they had before. None of them could properly stay on the ground without floating onto the ceiling or bumping into one another, to Tai Li it was like a constant airborne circus something the acrobat was deeply amused and intrigued by. Zhao on the other hand, was not amused. As he tried to regain his footing and remarkably failed at each and every attempt he couldn't help but snort in frustration at the powers this boy was capable of invoking. He expected a show of power to be sure but what he and his men were experiencing now was almost supernatural. And now I've merely turned off the gravity on your side of the room, 
I can't imagine any of you can gain a foothold now due to any force of pressure literally being removed. What you're experiencing now is what outer space is like, there's no gravity there, it's like being a superhero 24-7 up there. Naruto exclaimed in an almost nostalgically childish fashion, earning very confused looks from literally everyone in the room. You cannot be serious, what you're doing now is completely unheard of in any Fire Nation text, and now you honestly expect me to believe that you've surpassed the heavens themselves and traveled beyond the very stars. Zhao practically grumbled, still failing to return to the ground in possibly the most awkward of ways. Naruto just shrugged and grinned at Zhao's challenge, ready to humble him once more. I've just turned your world upside down Zhao, literally. I'm showing I clearly possess abilities you, and most likely no one for the past thousands of years, has ever seen. Given what I'm showing you now, do you doubt I could make it to outer space? The only unfun part about space is that there's no air, so your intestines will implode from the inside in a matter of seconds if you aren't like me, which sucks for you because you can never go into space like I can. Naruto finished explaining, while Zhao just looked at the boy questioning if he was actually telling the truth or if he was an escapee from a local asylum. Anyway, time to have you back on the ground now, Jurioka Suteru Jutsu, Sei Hoka. Naruto stated after performing a small number of hand seals, which sent Zhao and his men plummeting into the floor, much to Tai Li's amusement as the acrobat burst out in laughter while Ajala stifled a chuckle. Zhao growled lowly in irritation as he and his fellows tried to regain their footing, stumbling a few times in the process as their balance returned, such constant adverse changes in that their central gravity had taken a slight on their sense of perspective. Dusting himself off from the small amount of dirt that littered the steel floor, Zhao looked at Naruto with a sense of not only respect, but perhaps at what hinted at as a bit of jealousy and maybe even anger. It would seem Her Highness's claims are not in the least exaggerated, boy. Your powers are quite unique, I have never seen talents before in all my years in the military, nor have I even heard of them. You speak a language I've never heard before as well, this implies that you are indeed a foreigner but regardless of your affiliation what strange land you come from, as long Her Royal Highness Ajala regard as such an important asset I will not question your being here. Zhao stated officially in a somewhat respectful tone, he refused to address Naruto by his name, but he had clearly learned that Naruto's powers were indeed as powerful as they were mysterious. Your Highness, if we maintain our current schedule we will arrive at the Northern Water Tribe in the next two and a half days. Our fleet has gathered itself to its maximum percentage, every ship and frigate is ready for battle. Zhao commented in an almost gruff-sounding voice, a small indication of bloodlust evident in his voice. Excellent work Admiral, signal for the fleet that we're ready to cast off ASAP. I trust our quarters are ready for arrival. Ajala said. Of course your excellency, I had them prepared for only the most noble of commendations, it's one hall down from where we are now. Zhao stated with a wide smile across his face, hoping to gain some brownie points by treating the daughter of his fire lord with the same accommodations she was given in her castle. Tai Li and Mai looked at Naruto with a look of question and possible concern, to which he merely shrugged. Um, Mr. Zhao? Where will Naruto be staying? He is within our company after all, shouldn't he get a room too? Tai Li questioned, hoping not to offend Ajala by possibly speaking out of line. Before Zhao could retort, Ajala spoke up to answer her question. Naruto can sleep in the same room as us Tai Li, I'll have the Admiral prepare for an additional bed to be brought into our quarters. That won't be a problem now, will it Admiral? Ajala questioned in an almost demanding tone, having Zhao tug against his necktie area in while he cleared his throat. Oh of course not your highness, I will be sure it is done at once. This boy has displayed the remarkable powers that I now see will be a great asset to the upcoming battle, we need not have him share the same accompaniment as common foot soldiers. Zhao responded. Oh, an admiral? Please call Naruto by his name, he clearly deserves at least some method of respect from you, he is clearly a man, not a boy like Zuzu. Ajala said with a hint of respect for the golden-haired sage evident in her voice to which Naruto couldn't help but lightly smile that the royalty of this time was already giving him a bit of respect. He noticed my fidget slightly at the name of Zuzu, something he would question her about later. Why yes, of course your highness. 
If you wish Naruto to accompany your quarters, I have no right to question it. Zhao said. Good. Now then, if you need to speak with any of us Admiral, we'll be in our quarters. Ajala said calmly as she turned to leave, her companions including Naruto had already turned to leave and were practically walking down the hallway now. As Ajala entered the door frame, a small cough from Zhao stopped her. Yes, Admiral. Your Highness, now that we are alone I feel more comfortable to speaking with you. With all due respect, you have not mentioned on how you or your companions met, Naruto, to begin with. His abilities that you have witnessed while I thought to be merely an exaggeration have been proven real, as mysterious and powerful as they are. While I should not have doubted your reverence for his strengths, you will forgive me if I question whether or not he is our ally. Zhao stated with a tone of authority, Ajala's eyes squinted in a small amount of anger even as her back faced the admiral. He is clearly a foreigner who wishes to serve our great nation, while this is the first step of what the Fire Nation hopes to accomplish to have all the other nations bend to us, is it really wise to accept him so freely despite his abilities? He looks nothing like any resident of any nation I've ever seen, the way he dresses himself accompanied by that long, flowing golden hair of his make him stand out like a sore thumb amongst any normal people. How can we be sure he is even a resident of any of the bordering nations at all? Perhaps he is from a foreign yet to be explored he could be the first of many from a native land lying in wait to declare war on us when we are most vulnerable. And even if he is from one of the other nations, what's to say he won't betray us from the inside once he has our trust? The Admiral finished, while Ajala lightly clamped her hands in frustration. Admiral. Yes, Your Highness. Naruto is to be respected as not only a member of this ship, but as one of my companions and as an ally to this nation. He holds many secrets within him that will grant great honor, good fortune, and endless power to the Fire Nation, I will not have such an advantage swindled by jealousy and suspicion, do I make myself clear? Why why yes, your highness. I will explain the origins of how I met Naruto and where he is truly from after our victory over the Northern Water Tribe, until then you are to not question him in any way. Oh of course, your highness. If you have need me of Admiral. I will be in my quarters accompanied by fellows. Ajala calmly walked out of the room afterwards, calmly shutting the door behind her. She couldn't help but smirk as she left and wandered down the hall, getting under people's skin was ever so satisfying. It was even better when they were of a so-called importance, and yet they couldn't do anything her due to her station. Zhao on the other hand was less than pleased. As soon as he was sure Ajala wasn't close enough to hear, he huffed in audible frustration, a small fire growing in his hands out of irritation for the scenario that had confronted him. HRRGH. This is more than annoying. After so long of trying to prove myself to His Majesty, I finally have the chance to stand beside the princess of our great nation, the prodigy child of the Fire Lord Oze himself. A chance to bask one of the greatest victories our nation has yet to have against those water tribe animals, an opportunity to show the ingenious, cunning and brutality of our resolve. And then, the people would talk of how Admiral Zhao and Princess Ajala led the charge on that fateful day, and how we would emerge as heroes from the wreckage in the eyes our people, and how I would be personally rewarded by His Majesty himself. And now, this. Right when I have the opportunity to redeem myself for my failures over letting the Avatar escape again and again, and to bring honor and glory to my people, an outsider steps into the fray. This boy, whether he has the approval of Princess Ajala or not, is very, very dangerous. The abilities he just displayed to me are unlike any type of bending I have ever seen or heard of before, and I doubt that he showed me even the minimal amount of what he can truly do. Not only is he a potential threat to the Fire Nation, but he marches aboard my vessel with the approval of the Fire Lord's daughter, humbles my men and I with unknown powers and will be taking part in a battle that was supposed to my defining moment of glory. If he can prove himself of use to this battle then I will be willing to accept that, but he will not steal the honor and privilege being the deciding factor of this battle, that right belongs solely to Her Highness and I. Not only will that day be a great victory for the Fire Nation, but it will also result in the destruction of the Northern Water Tribe, a symbol to all who would defy the Fire Nation of our path to greatness. And most importantly above everything, 
there will be cheers across the capital as the rest of the world cries out in despair that the Avatar has fallen at long last, and that wretched legacy of altruistic defenders will have finally ended. The people of the Fire Nation will forever tell tales about the Admiral named Zhao, the man who dealt the killing blow to the Avatar in his last waking moments. I will be known as both a hero and a champion of this great nation, and His Majesty will finally see me in the light I was born to be in. And best of all, that snivelling disgrace of a son of his will be brought to the stage on his final failure. With the Avatar dead at my hands, Zuko will never have the chance to redeem himself in the eyes of the nobles or more importantly His Majesty, I will be the hero champion of the Fire Nation alongside the mighty prodigy Princess Ajala. And no one, especially not some sun-haired teenager will steal this honour from me. It would be quite a tragedy if an accident were to befall him during the battle. We shall see what opportunities time brings. Underscore. Meanwhile, Ajala and her companions had made themselves comfortable at their quarters. The room was much like how Ajala had remembered her quarters back at the palace, Zhao had not exaggerated in his claims about making her feel at home. It looked as if the room had been decorated for noble accompaniment, filled with the finest room décor fit for royal blood as well as any they wished to accompany them. A small desk and accompanied by large mirrors sat to the left side of the room, complete with a stool so anyone could address their looks in the ways that they wanted. A large bed near the middle to back of the room decorated with the same furnishings of Ajala's resting place at her home laid suitably down for her to rest. Since the bed was so large and the room itself was rather compact, Ajala had agreed with Tai Li's statement that the girls could sleep together in the same mattress. While a seemingly intimate notion, Ajala looked upon sharing her resting place with her friends as little more than courtesy. Even though she would never admit, she highly revered both Tai Li and Mai as the only two people she could really connect with, she just could never click with anyone on the outside world or in her father's court. Tai Li saw the bed-sharing event reminiscent of the slumber parties they used to have when they were little, and snuggling with Ajala always made her feel warm inside. While Mai had grown used to sharing a bed with her friends, since they were considerably older now she felt the act was more intimate than it let on. She only prayed that Naruto wasn't a pervert who would try to take advantage of the situation, if he did she was ready to lodge a knife in between his legs to make her point. Naruto's bed had already been dragged in swiftly by two accompanying soldiers, who left in the right side corner of the room with as much distance from Ajala's bed as possible. It was not as royal as what Ajala and her friends had been given but it was of much better stature and condition than what the common soldiers were given. The young sage entered the room with a small smile on his face, taking around the surroundings of his quarters. Mai sat on the stool and laid her back against the desk, Ajala sat comfortably on her bed and Tai Li was meditating at the end of the mattress. I'm surprised even with you authority Ajalaheim that you managed to get Admiral Zhao to agree letting me share the same quarters as you and your friends, I'd thought he'd be a little bit more protective, that's all. Naruto chuckled nervously, as Ajala gave him a small questioning look. What do you mean by that Naruto? What exactly are you trying to imply? Well, ERM, how do I say this without offending you? Naruto quipped as he scratched the back of his head trying to find a way to explain the situation without having a foot end up in his groin. It didn't take Ajala long to get the picture however, as a small blush creeped across her face. Tai Li and Mai, who had been listening in, couldn't help but blush as well. Just because you're in a room with three girls, don't get any ideas out of it Naruto. Mai commented with a cold tone, making Naruto gulp in a tad bit of fear. He knew pissing off a female, young or old, was always in an incredibly foolish idea. And to have to share a room with three of them could be more of a curse than an envisioned godsend. Even though his former sensei was quite the pervert and would most likely try to take advantage of the situation, Naruto knew that for his general safety he would keep his hands to himself, lest he lose his manhood, end up a burn corpse and be thrown overboard to the passing sharks. Ajala coughed lightly to break up the tension, clearing her throat to speak again. Even if Zhao disapproved of the four being together in the same room, he couldn't do much about it to begin with, I'm the daughter of the Fire Lord he's only a fleet admiral. Plus, even if you were, involved, with any us, Zhao really wouldn't have a say in any of it anyway. Ajala commented casually, trying to hide her light blush about the thought of more primeval, carnal actions. 
Um, Ajala? Do you mind if I ask you a question? Naruto asked politely. I don't see the harm in it, so ask away. Who's Suzu? There was a small silence that overtook the group, with Ajala bearing an almost sadistic smirk as Tai Li grinned wildly. Mai was trying to hide an evident smile and maybe a small blush, something Naruto had noticed. He scratched the back of his awkwardly as he sat down on his bed, wondering if he had stumbled on a bad topic. Zuzu, or rather Zuko, is the son to the Fire Lord Oze and my older brother, though by how far fate has separated our paths I dare say we aren't related at all. Ajala practically chuckled, earning a puzzled look from Naruto. You see Naruto, Zuzu is what we call the runt of the litter. Even though he's my older brother and was born before and even has a higher claim to the throne, he's an absolute disgrace to my family. He's soft, gentle, and fragile, his fire-bending skills are only of average skill, while I was born a prodigy. Do you know how disgraced my father felt when he learned his eldest child had such little potential? And then one day, my brother crossed the line and dishonored my father in his own throne room, he learned his lesson that day, he never forgot never to cross our father ever again. Ajala noted darkly, something Tai Li shivered at and Mai couldn't help but wince at. Naruto was oblivious to what this prince had suffered, and decided to let his curiosity take over. How was he punished exactly, Ajala Haim? In my time when a ninja dishonored his or her village to a heavy extent they would be exiled from said village, an ex-nin is looked upon as an embodiment of dishonor and shame. Naruto commented, earning small smirk from Ajala in the process. Well, it is apparent your people or rather my great ancestors were as wise then as they are now. Zuko was not only struck by father to forever scar him as a mark of his failure, but he was exiled from the Fire Nation as a whole as a reminder of his weakness. He was never to return to his homeland unless he found a way to redeem himself in the eyes of our father, now that the Avatar has appeared. The Fire Lord has learned that Suzu has attempted many times to either capture or kill him to regain his honor. Ajala sighed, stroking her fingers through her way before continuing on. Though not to my surprise, Zuko has failed over and over and over to catch the Avatar, even when he has come close to getting him he still manages to screw it up. It's become evident to my father that Zuko is what I said he always was, nothing but a failure. Even Admiral Zhao. The fleet commander of the Fire Nation's flotilla has failed in his attempts to capture this avatar almost as many times as Suzu, that's why my father dispatched my friends and I to assist Zhao in this campaign to destroy the Northern Water Tribe and capture or destroy the avatar. Ajala finished in an adamant tone, as a small smile traced across Naruto's lips. And then you found me. Naruto added softly, as Tai Li's eyes perked up. Yeah, then we found you and I'm starting to feel pretty glad that we did. You were down there for like forever, and it looked really painful how you tied up. And now you have the chance to live your life again, and this time, you have us friends from the get-go. Tai Li added in her usual optimistic, cheerful note. Mai couldn't help but roll her eyes as Ajala chuckled softly. Yes, I am glad to have such a warm welcome to this new world, Tai Chan. I never had many friends until much later in my life and then I awake into this new world to find that I have friends from the very beginning, it's almost a little unnerving. Naruto replied happily, making Tai Li's grin grow wider in the process. You say your brother Zuko is not only a disgrace to your family line, but a failure compared to you in the art of firebending as well. Forgive my possible insubordination my Haim, but I wish to meet him myself before I make such judgments. Naruto quipped in almost stern tone earning a bemused smile from Ajala and a surprised look from both Mai and Tai Li. Not many people would stand up to Ajala in any form at all, to see someone even attempt such a feat was a rarity within itself. Do you doubt what I say is true, Naruto? After all, we are allies are we not? Ajala remarked. Of course we are my Haim, we are allies, and more importantly, we are friends. However, as I mentioned beforehand, I need to meet your brother myself before I make such judgments about him. I was once considered a failure myself as were many people I once knew, but we strived to be more than what others saw us as, and in the end, we accomplished being so much more than what we ever thought we could be. Naruto replied, earning a questioning look from Ajala for his reasons. You were considered a failure Naruto? I doubt that, 
your abilities are unique as they are powerful, such strength demands respect. Stated the Fire Princess. Naruto chuckled softly in response, looking at his princess with his one good eye. You'd be surprised Ajala, at a time in my life I was little more than a mischievous child with hardly any potential. I was more of a prankster than I was a prodigy, something you apparently had, or rather have the luxury of being. My abilities were petty and my strength was poor, but I worked to become the man I am today, and now my power shines brighter than ever. Naruto replied strongly, earning small smiles from all the females in the group. The sage chuckled once more, recalling something from his past life. When I think about it now Ajala, it's actually pretty funny. If I had concentrated hard enough earlier in my youth, perhaps I could have prevented the disaster that accompanied my past, I could have been better prepared for the man who threatened to destroy the world and make it his own. But my time in the past is done, I can only look towards the future now, I may have failed then, but I will not fail now. Naruto replied in a fiercely determined voice, startling the females a bit with his strong outburst of bravado. Your determination is admirable, Naruto. I can respect that in a man that he follows what he believes in, no matter where his path may take him. It is the trait of fools, but sometimes that of the occasional hero. Mai remarked, earning a small smirk from Tai Li. I never knew you were so poetic Mai, I never figured for the time to be into that kind of stuff. Usually your aura is kind of, bland. Tai Li stated in a somewhat nervous tone scratching the back of her head as she struggled to find the words describe her friend's demeanor without insulting her. Mai shot a small glare her way, while a bemused Ajala and Naruto chuckled softly at Tai Li's innocence. Trust me Tai Li, when you're surrounded by nothing but a bunch of old fools arguing in a courtroom over who has the right to lay claim to a water mill but hundreds of years ago, there's really nothing to do but red. Mai quipped in an almost dry tone, earning a sympathetic look from Naruto. Before anyone could decide on what to say next, Naruto noticed that a certain pink acrobat had been fiddling with her fingers for a while, not unlike a certain Hayaga had come to love too little too late. It had become increasingly obvious that she had a question for him, but was either too nervous to ask or didn't want to sound intrusive and wanted to relay it in a more appropriate manner. Um, Naruto? Can I ask you a question? I mean, if that's okay with you that is. Tai Li nervously chuckled, earning questioning looks from her friends while Naruto merely rolled his eyes in response. He had a feeling what her question was going to be, he knew it was only a matter of time before someone from the current world asked him about it. Let me guess what your question is Tai Chan, is it if I have had girlfriend in my past life? Naruto grinned adamantly, the uppity gymnast blushing a noticeable pink in response. My merely face palmed while Ajala rolled her eyes at Tai Li's typical behavior, the fire princess was actually surprised she hadn't asked the young sage sooner. How did you know I was going to ask you that? You can't read minds can you? Tai Li stated in a sarcastic notion, earning a bemused look from Naruto, which had the trio of females almost gaping. You're kidding, please tell me you're kidding. Tai Li said almost nervously knowing full well that if she ever had any perverted thoughts about any scenario that he could possibly know full well the extent of her feelings. I can't read people's minds fully if that's what you're asking, only partially. My training as a sage later opened up certain doors for me that allows me to read people's minds only a subconscious level, meaning I can get the gist of what a person is thinking, but not in complete detail. Naruto explained, earning an astonished look from Tai Li and Ajala while Mai couldn't help but smirk. Is there anything you can't do? Mai practically chuckled, which Naruto let out a hearty laugh in response to. Come to think of it Mai-chan, there's not much I really can't do. I'm pretty savvy in the arts of carpentry and blacksmithing, and I can sing and play instruments pretty well. Not to mention I learned how to cook to what I'd say is a pretty damn good mastery over it. Naruto replied honestly to which Mai rolled her eyes humorously in response to the newfound wonder boy she and her friends had come across. And then there's the fact that I can over time I actually mastered the art of flight itself, let me tell ya, it was pain in the ass how to figure out, I still can't fly at leisure though. Flying takes up a lot of my energy, leaves me vulnerable for a bit after I descend. I remember the first time I thought I mastered it, 
I flew so high I actually went through the atmosphere and ended up in space. Naruto heartily chuckled, earning shocked expressions from the group of girls. They had been present when he had mentioned he went to a place beyond the stars before, but it was hard to tell then whether he was telling the truth or just bluffing to make Zhao feel minuscule. But given how casually he was expressing his adventure, there was actually some inclination to believe him. It's a good thing the Kyuabai's chakra actually gives off a coating of oxygen, otherwise as I mentioned before I would have internally imploded, apparently it's a very excruciating experience from what he told me, I'm guessing he might have thrown one of his rivals into space one time when he was pissed at him. Getting back down was the real pain though, I forgot about orbital re-entry, I walked funny for at least three weeks after that. Falling over 100,000 feet at 17,000 miles per hour burns like hell. Naruto remembered not so fondly, rubbing his backside in memory of the severe burns he suffered to his rump from the collision of his superheated anus hitting the earth. Ajala just stared at the teen in wonder, struggling to believe if what he was claiming was true or not, sure enough this man had accomplished things she would have not believed physically possible in her lifetime but could he have really survived a fall from the heavens themselves at such immeasurable speeds? It didn't seem humanly possible, then again, Naruto himself didn't seem all that human to begin with, given how he informed her and her friends of how he quite literally had his own inner demon. Come to think of it, let's get back to your question Tai Li, on whether or not I had a girlfriend in my past life, well, yes and no. I mean once my home made it public knowledge that I was the son of one the greatest shinobi who had ever lived and the greatest leader of our village, you can bet your ass that I had arranged marriages trying to be set up for me all the time by politicians who wanted to profit from it in some way. The leader of my village, Senju Tsunade, put a stop to that before it even began though, she wanted me to choose my own wives and for my own wives to choose me which is in a sense ironic since Tsunade Chan herself ended up becoming one of those tragically short-lived partners of mine. But to get to the point and answer your question, no, I did not have ever really have a girlfriend relationship to speak, hell, I never even had a wife to speak of. Naruto finished, crossing his arms akin to an almost disappointed pout. Tai Li looked at him questionably as did her friends, to which Naruto quickly noticed due to the silence in the room. You had, wives? Mai asked curiously. As in, more than one? That seems a bit, strange. Ajala mentioned just every bit as curious as her friend. She had known that under rare occasions a man was allowed to have two to three wives, but even then those men were usually of noble status and even having a second wife was enough to raise a few eyebrows. I didn't really have wives though girls. The marriages that were arranged never happened since the Fourth Shinobi World War ended up with the complete devastation of the world due to Madara's Eye of the Moon plan. I actually never ended up getting married like I was supposed to after the war, due to the fact I was probably literally the only human being left alive on the planet. Naruto stated grimly, reminded of his past failures at stopping the Uchiha madman. Sitting up from her bed after her legs had gone numb, Ajala yawned slightly and looked over at her sun-haired companion. How many wives were you supposed to have anyway Naruto? Two? Three? Perhaps even four? Ajala questioned inquisitively, a small smirk appearing on Naruto's face in the process. Well, let's see, counting my village, the separate villages, foreign continents and distant countries, I would have had approximately eight wives. Naruto recalled as he finished counting his fingers, allowing Ajala and Tai Li to gape in shock while Mai practically spit out her freshly made herbal tea. Eight wives? Isn't that a bit much? How could one man hope to be a husband to so many women? Not to mention foster the amount of children each wife would want. Ajala practically choked out, as Naruto laughed in a hearty manner in response. Trust me Ajala Haim, I never got the chance to find out any of your questions. Remember, I never actually to get married to any of them, everyone kinda died before that could happen. Though I can see what you mean, looking back at now, it does seem pretty overwhelming, not to mention I'd have to keep up with rudimentary schedules of each clan alike. Naruto pondered, scratching his chin in wonder about how such large details skipped over his mind. Didn't your past life, or should I say the Fire Nation's past in general, have any shame? Such an amount of wives seems a bit sacrilegious, 
marriage is supposed to be a sacred bond between a man and a woman in singular tense. There have been a few cases where the nobles in the Fire Nation were allowed to lead at least three times, but such polygamy always raises quite a few eyebrows whenever said case shows up. My stated. I guess things were different for Hai no Kuni in my day, my Chan. The CRA, or Clan Restoration Act, often saw what I have described to you. People of noble birthrights often had the Clan Restoration Act enacted upon them though that was usually only if they were more or less one of the last members of their said clan. As both the heir to the Uzumaki and Namikaze lineage, the CRA was enacted upon me when it was made public knowledge to the world that I was the son of Kanaha's famous Kiyoisenko, the yellow flash of Kanaha, Namikaze Minato. You can bet your bottom dollar that when everyone found out that I was the son of possibly the most powerful shinobi ever known, Every politician wanted their daughter or niece to be wed to me in order to reap the riches of the Uzumaki and Namikaze fortunes. As I said beforehand though, Tsunade Chan put a stop to that before it began and ironically became one of my wives herself. Not only was having so many wives considered necessary for a person of my stature, but many people actually outright demanded it so I could restore the clans that were both the legacy of my Kaasan and Tiyu San, my mother and father, respectively. Such bindings of husband and wives between nobles in my time were not uncommon Ajalaheim, in fact, it was usually a rarity for a member of a noble household not to have more than wife, even when said member didn't have the Clan Restoration Act enacted upon him or her. A woman by the name of Karin who came to me was of no noble lineage, but there was much pain and suffering her eyes. She had been used and abused from a man who was once my ally, whom had betrayed me long ago. Karin saw me as the exact opposite of what he represented, all she wanted was someone to love her and treat her as an equal. Despite my initial suspicion, I gave her a chance despite her old ties to the bastard that shall not be named, needless to say Karin passed my expectations and I came to know her as the wonderful woman that she truly was. I was supposed to have joint rule over both Kanahagakur and Kirigakur due to the marriage to both Tsunade and Mei-chan respectively which would have also made a pseudo-mizu cage and hokage at the same time. Following the marriage to Tamari would have given me some root of power in Sunagakur due to the fact Tamari was the sister of the Kaze Cage Gara, and both the Tsuchigumo and Hayaga clan I would have eventually had control over due to the union between Hinata, Hotaru, and I. Finally, both Nate's Hiko village and Hashigakur would have been more or less under my control. One of the women who came to me in hopes to be one of my wives was Shizuka the future queen of Nade's Hiko village, who I met previously and ironically enough, convinced her that she shouldn't set out to marry due to some stupid law set forth by her village that she had to marry the apprentice of the son in Jiraya, my former sensei. And Hashigakur was actually thinking about taking a vote to proclaim me its Rokudame Hoshi cage when I liberated them from the oppressive tyranny of their self-proclaimed Yandame Hoshi cage, Akahashi. The votes were eventually tallied and they all united in favor of me becoming their next leader, much to the disdain of the Kanaha council who still saw me as only the reincarnation of the Kyuabai despite all I had done for the village. The only thing that needed to be done in order to cement the alliance was for me to join in union with one of the women of their village, and I chose Hokyoto chan a dear friend of mine I made when I spent time in Hashigakur formerly. She agreed quite happily, which I was surprised to at first probably because I was too dense to realize that he had a crush on me for a long time. Naruto half-heartedly chuckled, realizing all the opportunities he had wasted with people who had admired from afar, had he realized their affections for him sooner, things might have turned out differently. Naruto, is what you say true? If what you claim is indeed true then that means your political power in the world after this war of yours would have been quite formidable, having such status over so many different places at the same time. If you had been able to claim such a hold over the world afterwards then you would have had quite a considerable amount of control over the world, possibly as much as my. Ajala stuttered, not thinking that such a feat was possible. Then your father, Ajalaheim? If the current fire daimyo of this time, Fire Lord Oze, is indeed the feudal lord over Hai no Kuni then I would suspect by now he would have made admirable progress in this new war with the Avatar, if not, then that is most troubling especially if he has limited reign over lands other than his own country. When a daimyo of one of the nations declared war on a foreign land or lands outside of his or her own territory, 
the assault would usually be quite swift and the war would be over in a matter of a month or two. But I sense doubt in you Ajala, it's written on your face. By your body language, I take it this awakened avatar had been active for a while now? If so, then it is all the more apparent that not only Admiral Zhao and your Niaizen have failed as many times to stop him as you have told me, but I'm guessing Hai no Kuni forces in general have been unable to locate or stop this avatar. As I said before, I'm usually not a very judgmental person but such a string of failures seems rather, unusual, Ajalaheim. Naruto calmly stated, not wanting to arouse the flames of Ajala's wrath. He knew that Ajala had given him the right to voice his opinion, but she was still the princess over his homeland, and therefore had the right to judge him for such honesty. Ajala sighed in an almost equally calm manner as she lightly clenched the sheets of her bed. I agree with your statement Naruto, the failures of our nation in capturing or destroying this new avatar have been not only a setback in our goal to unify this world but it is inexcusable when the prince of the fire nation and one of my father's most revered commanders fail to stop a supposed messiah. When our raid on the northern water tribe begins I assure that we as comrades will end this infernal altruistic legacy forever and bring true unification to this separated world. Ajala responded determinately, earning a raised eyebrow from her friends and a small smile from Naruto in the process. Determination and pride, it is good to see that the current royalty has not lost touch of the true honor of Hai no Kuni. You'll be a good queen someday Ajala Haim. Naruto commented causing Ajala herself to momentarily ponder her station in how she would rule. She had always been told and brought up to believe that the reign of her father would last forever, and she herself had come to believe such terms adamantly. However, now that Naruto had been reborn into what was a new world to him, the future was uncertain. Ajala shook her head in her mind, never daring to have thought such thoughts before. The very idea that her father would never rule forever was usually considered to be heresy in the eyes of her royal peers. Naruto, may I ask you a question? Mai commented, earning Naruto's half-eye gaze. What is it my chan I'm open to any questions to pass the time. The sage casually responded. I know it's only been less than a day since we found you, but you seem to have quite a clear memory about your past life itself and no skirmishes in between to interrupt your thought process. With a vibrant memory of your past and what you could have been had you been able to stop this man called Madara, do you plan to seek and lay claim to the lands and clans you were supposed to rule over? I know it sounds like an absurd question given how many years must have passed and such things most likely don't even exist anymore, I'd just like to know, that's all. My questioned calmly, Tai Li blinking her eyes and thought about the conversation while Ajala's eyes widened at the thought of this man regaining such claim over so much territory, even if it all was nothing but nothing but lost memories to her nation. That's an interesting question worth an answer my Chan, yes, I do plan to lay claim to what was supposed to be granted to me. The lands and clans I were supposed to rule over are now long gone over course, so I will rebuild them from scratch. I suspect it'll take me little over a year to do so, given what I can accomplish in just a day. Naruto responded casually, brushing some of his golden bangs out of his eyes. Ajala blinked a few times before properly accessing the situation before, looking at Naruto with an adamant source of concentration. Naruto, if you actually successfully gained a foothold in so many lands and clans over such a little amount of time, you could have possibly eventually gained more power over the world in your lifetime than my great-grandfather Sozin did, and he was the greatest fire lord of all time. Ajala almost immediately regretted saying such words though, it wasn't that she regretted saying such a statement to Naruto, it's that she regretted saying such a statement in general. If saying that someone could hold more power over the world than her father Ose was heresy, then saying someone could have more grasp over the earth than Fire Lord Sozin did was practically sacrilege. Even though she had been named after her father's father, the now deceased Fire Lord Ajalan, she had come to know of her great-grandfather's legacy even more so than her own father's. To Ajala's knowledge, Sozin was the only man she knew her father truly respected. She knew that Sozin was the father of her own father's father, but apparently that was not the only reason Ose had respected Sozin so. Sozin was the one who saw the avatars for the threat they represented to the Fire Nation and the world itself, sought to end the cycle of pointless altruism of helping people too weak to help themselves, 
which Ashila herself considered a noble sentiment. The legacy of the self-proclaimed messiahs had been born with the air nomads, and more often than not the next avatar of the wretched cycle would originate from there. From the knowledge of her history told to her by her father, Sozin was one of the few beings alive to actually kill an avatar, a feat thought to be impossible due to the avatar's godlike status. The last avatar, Roku, had fallen to her great-grandfather after he had finally come to realize what chaos their order had brought upon the world. The people of this world needed to be strong for themselves, they didn't need an overhead guardian to constantly protect them when they were too feeble or lazy to do so. What she had been brought to believe was that the people of the Fire Nation and of the rest of the world itself needed to learn to protect themselves, they didn't need a self-proclaimed savior fighting for them. The genocide of the Air Nomads was supposed to have cleansed the Earth of the Avatar legacy forever, but Sozin had apparently believed that the next Avatar, the last Airbender still lived on after the destruction brought upon his people. Sozin had continued the rest of his life as the Fire Lord searching to locating and destroying this being, but the last Avatar was never found, and Sozin's life ended in vain as a result, never accomplishing his true mission. That's why when the new Avatar had been revealed, Ajala knew that her father would want to accomplish the life's work of his own father who had come so close to destroying the legacy of the avatars forever. Her failure of a brother Zuko and the somewhat revered commander Zhao had been assigned to locate and destroy the avatar, Zhao more than her brother due to his actual order to do so, from what she suspected Zuko only wanted to locate the avatar and destroy him in a pathetic attempt to regain honor that could never be restored. Zhao was only given the title of admiral for the planned assault on the Northern Water Tribe, but had become apparent that Oze had begun to doubt his own decision following Zhao's numerous failures to capture or kill the Avatar, thus, why her father sent her and her friends out to assist the new admiral in his task instead. Ajalaheim? I don't mean interrupt your train of thought, but just a moment ago you claimed that your Sasafo, your great-grandfather Fire Lord Sozin was the greatest Fire Lord of all time. Naruto questioned calmly once more, not wanting to infuriate his Haim with his consistent questions. Fire Lord Sozin is considered to be the greatest firebender and fire lord in the known history of my people, he is the man who lead the Fire Nation in its campaign of unification with the four separate nations, and the man who sought to destroy the legacy of the avatars forever. While it would be said to be sacrilege for even thinking such a thought, I now must wonder if my great-grandfather was truly the greatest firebender of all time to begin with. If thousands of years of my people's history have been lost to us, then it would only be natural in the mindset of the people to remember their oldest memory as the strongest. But your very existence has proven there was a time when firebenders existed far past even Sozin's time on Earth, and by that information alone any person could speculate that there might have been greater fire lords than Sozin that existed in a past that we don't know even know about. Ajala finished in a rather melancholic note, the thought of so many centuries of history of her people that were most likely forever lost depressed her somewhat. Naruto shrugged nonchalantly, stretching his arms from having sat in one place for so long. I wouldn't worry about the past so much Ajala Haim. I'll do my best to bring what I know and remember into this time. If I can bring knowledge that has been lost to the people of my future then I will, after all, I vowed to protect this land thousands of years ago, and as long as I draw breath that vow is not broken." Naruto stated proudly, clenching a fist in determination. Ajala couldn't happen but to chuckle lightly at the boy's confidence, while Tai Li and Mai smiled lightly. Tai Li raised her hand in a childish matter to be granted an audience, something Naruto rolled his eyes humorously at. Um, Naruto? Don't you miss the women who would have been your wives? I can't imagine the memory of losing of all them hurts any less now than it did then. Tai Li said sadly, knowing how her friend must have felt and most likely still felt about the loss of so many loved ones. Naruto laid back in his beds with arms resting behind his head, looking up at the ceiling in thought. To be honest Tai Chan, I honestly didn't want to live any more when I had lost all my friends and loved ones. But Karama, the Kyuubai no Kitsune wouldn't let me die so easily, he actually convinced me to live on despite of the destruction of everything I cared for. I hated him for it back then, but as everything's come full circle, I can't help but be thankful for his stubbornness. As for my loved ones, it's not like I'll never see them again, given my power now, having them in my arms again is not an impossibility. 
bringing them back will probably drain as much energy from me as it takes for me to be airborne, but I'll sacrifice all the strength I need to bring them back again. Naruto smiled brightly, fondly remembering all of the women who had dedicated themselves to him and who he had dedicated himself to. Ashila, Mai, and Tai Li on the other hand were not as refreshed as Naruto was. Many people could interpret his recent words as borderline insanity or an escapade full of denial, but somehow each one of them felt what the golden-haired boy meant what he said in some way. In order to clear the uncomfortable air, someone had to ask him what he meant. Luckily for the trio, the boy raised his hand in order to halt the inevitable question. I know what you guys are going to say, that I can't see the ones I love ever again due to the fact they are millennia gone, however, with me there is always a way for the impossible to occur. I can breach the boundaries that the Shinigami has placed, even he has no rule over me anymore. I can bring those who have passed to walk amongst us once more, simply put, I can bring back people from beyond the grave. Naruto stated seriously, not an inch of humor or sarcasm present in his voice. The three were beyond perplexed at this point, Naruto had been able to display abilities not humanly possible to their knowledge and had even talked of being able to take flight and live amongst the stars themselves, but this, such a feat didn't seem possible, at least for any mortal. Are you quite serious, Naruto? You can, resurrect those who have passed? How is that even possible? I'm beginning to question whether the demon you hold within you is actually real, and in fact that actually are the demon. Ashila stated inquisitively, knowing full well such an accusation could cause the youth to sink Zhao's ship in anger. Instead, the boy merely shrugged once more and got up slightly to look his princess in her golden eyes. I can understand your discomfort or disbelief with such a feat Ashila Haim, but know full well I mean what I say and I say what I mean, I would never lie just to disturb you. I can bring back those who have fallen, but such an ability is incredibly taxing, I can only bring back seven to ten people at once, then I'll collapse for a day or two out of chakra exhaustion. If I tried to bring back more than ten people at once through the Gadu, Ryan Tensei no Jutsu then I'd most likely face a comatose state or possibly even die if I overexerted myself, even I'm not invincible, I can die as anyone else can. Naruto factually retorted. We should be getting to bed soon anyway Ashila Haim, we've been up for a while and Zhao said that it would take two and a half days to get to the Northern Water Tribe. We should rest while we're able, and don't worry, I'll stay on my side of the room and I'll get up when I need to use the restroom. Naruto commented in a half-joking manner, knowing full well that he could face possible castration if he tried to get grabby with his female's roommates. Ashila sighed in agreement, and looked at Naruto for a moment waiting for him to exit the room. Getting the picture quickly, Naruto left the room so the girls could get dressed in their pajamas. After a moment or two of waiting, a knock on the other side of the door as a signal, Naruto walked into the room and saw all three females in their sleeping wear with their hair down. Cute Jamies, Tai Chan. Naruto commented to the acrobat whose sleep whose silk pink pajamas matched her ever innocent demeanor. Tai Li blushed a light pink at the compliment, and giggled softly, much to the amusement of Ajila as Mai merely sighed at Tai Li's typical attitude. Naruto performed a small jutsu with his hands, a small puff of smoke appearing around much to his roommate's surprise. Once the smoke cleared he was decorated in a blue suit made for sleeping, to which he yawned lazily and laid down on his bed. Tai Li once again giggled but this time out of actual humor at Naruto's now sleepy demeanor rather than his laid-back casual one. Mai took the left side of the bed while Tai Li took the left, the pink acrobat snuggling comfortably into Ajila's side reminiscent of their sleepovers when they were children. Ajila's lacy red nightgown that covered her body now had the Tai Li burrowing into it, to which the fire princess couldn't help but sigh in a desperate sort of happiness at Stroking her hand through the uppity girl's now loose hair, Ajila planted a small kiss on her head, much to Tai Li's enjoyment. Naruto sighed comfortably in his new quarters, closing his eyes and secretly wishing Kurama a good night's sleep as well. And then everything went black, as darkness claimed his consciousness. As the vessel moved on through the night, everyone in Ajila's quarters had drifted off to sleep. The ship was kept operational through the tireless and thankless efforts of the engineers, and most of the foot soldiers themselves had gone to sleep. Guard duty was an off-and-on premise, 
soldiers sharing shifts to make sure that there was no danger to be had, even if they were off at sea to begin with. Zhao however, was not asleep. The admiral had been staying up most of the night plotting the course of the battle soon to come, with the addition of Ajila's company and that of the boy as he still thought of Naruto as. He knew there had to be a way for him to seize victory alongside the daughter of his lord, he would not be outshone by a teenager, no matter how peculiar or powerful his abilities. No, the assault would be the crowning moment in career and it would furthermore prove himself to his lord that he was indeed worthy of serving the crown in future endeavors. Perhaps if the boy could be cornered, alone, where there were no witnesses to be had, he would merely be another casualty amongst the battlefield. Yes, yes, that would work out nicely. I will not have some sun-kissed haired freak steal the glory of the Fire Nation from that battle, nor will I let him besmirch my honor or Princess Ajala's. Despite Her Highness's claims, he is still a possible threat to our nation, his personality is brash and overconfident, his powers are beyond peculiar and his origins are a mystery to me until Her Highness reveals them to me, for all we know he could be a spy from one of the other nations sent to impede our progress from behind the scenes. Or even worse, he could be one of the Avatar's cohorts ready to strike from within. The Northern Water Tribe will fall, and the Avatar will die by my hand, and it will be done without this strange child in our midst. I see his alliance with us ending in a tragically short manner. Too bad, such power could have been advantageous, but we do not have the slightest guarantee that he could not use such strengths against us. The following morning, the room was dreary from the dimmed lights and there was a line of sight visible. Ajala was the first to wake, Mai resting peacefully on the right and Tai Li passed out comfortably against her own side. Despite the lack of light, she could see that Naruto's bed was empty. Moving up slightly as Tai Li's arms fell from place, the princess moved off her bed softly as to not disturb companions, only for half Tai Li to moan like a child whose parent had left it in bed unattended. Tai Li rose with a rather noisy yawn which in turn stirred Mai from her slumber as she shook her hair out of her face. Tai Li scratched her bum lazily, yawning once more in a lazy fashion, only for her echoing moan to be cut short by a pillow playfully tossed in her direction by Mai, much to Ajala's amusement. I need a shower. Mai proclaimed out loud, getting off from her bed and turning the lights on as she fumbled in the darkness. She and her acrobatic friend were quick to notice Naruto's absence, to which they looked at Ajala in question. The Fire Princess merely shrugged in response, heading towards the royal showers to wake herself up and then look for Naruto after, she knew he had to still be on the ship, he wouldn't just get up and leave, or rather fly away for no reason. Mai and Tai Li were quick to join Ajala in a respective shower, each washing down their naked bodies from the morning grime that followed any normal person. The nudity in which they shared each other's presences while alarming or unusual to most people, was not exactly uncommon for them. They had all seen each other naked before, usually after changing after a swim or having to share a shower when there were no others available. Mai was the least comfortable among them however, though what they were doing was strictly platonic the thought of showering bare amongst her friends was still a little off-putting to her, her friends didn't seem the least bit bothered though though Mai herself thought they weren't as reserved as she was due to the fact that the princess and the acrobat had always been very close to one another, even as far as friends go. Ajala and Tai Li took turns washing each other's backs, with Tai Li occasionally stopping to feel the muscles of her princess, much to Ajala's amusement and or pleasure. There was no physical evidence to prove that the relationship between Ajala and Tai Li was in any way physical or intimate. Despite her slight suspicions that behind closed doors the two were as close with one another as the bond between a man and a woman. Homosexuality wasn't exactly uncommon or unheard of, even though it was mostly frowned upon by nobility and families who wanted their son and or daughter to continue their family line regardless if it was of noble stature or not. She had remembered that during her time in court there seemed to be two females who always seemed to be at each other's side, without having the fear of being judged. Whether or not they were actually intimate, Mai simply didn't care about sexual preference, if two people loved each other regardless of gender, which was their business, not hers. A sharp snap from a towel against her backside made the reserved girl jump and let out a high-pitched yip, the naked acrobat laughing without shame of her antics as the fire princess chuckled slightly on the side. Her eye twitching in annoyance, 
Mai grabbed her towel and began to snap it at Tai Li's sides, causing the uppity girl to shriek herself. After a minute or two of play fighting for the hell of it, the trio of women dried themselves off and equipped themselves with their garments, and then began to wander the hallways to stretch their legs and look for Naruto. As the trio walked down the hallway, they were soon entranced by an enticing smell. A faint smile crossed their lips, each one equally enthralled by a rather unique scent in the air. Whatever was causing it, it certainly smelled delectable, a far cry from the food served to the common foot soldiers. The smell enticed them to the place of its origins, the dining hall, whether or not this was mere trickery of the aroma of a food that was actually awful was yet to be seen. As Ajala and her companions made their way into the rather large dining room filled with hungry soldiers, a familiar visage captured their eyes. At the usual spot where a cook would be placed, in his place stood Naruto, a bright smile washing over his face as he stirred the pot that the aroma had originated from. Like a flock of moths drawn to a lantern, the three women walked casually over to their golden-haired friend to see what exactly he had been up to. Naruto's head perked up upon hearing footsteps approaching his general direction, and was glad to see that his three friends had woken up. Ah, good morning ladies. I knew you'd find me eventually, I woke up about an hour ago, I got bored so I took a shower and followed the scent of food due to my rumbling stomach. Needless to say though, the food I found wasn't exactly appetizing and reminded a fair bit too much of the rations we shinobi got served during our times at war so I decided to cook up a bit of food myself. Naruto grinned, already having had his full of his own hand-cooked meal. Tai Li looked down at the boiling pot and took a deep whiff of it, and sighed in contentment upon smelling the aroma up close. It smells awesome Naruto, where did you learn to cook? Tai Li asked. When you're one of the last people on earth you've got to learn to feed yourself Tai Chan. Luckily for me the places where I traveled had plenty of cookbooks and recipes to be had I could learn from. And since I've traveled practically everywhere in this country, I'd look to toot my own horn and say that I think I know nearly every recipe in the book for authentic Hai no Kuni food, and that's saying a lot at the moment considering the recipes from my time probably don't even exist in this time. Naruto smiled, still enjoying the sweet aftertaste of chicken in his mouth. I managed to gather what ingredients I could with the chef's permission, when he saw me I guess he took it upon himself not to question what I do to the fact I travel with the princess of the Fire Nation herself. As for the rest, luckily I still had a few scrolls on me that I used to store some of the best ingredients from my time, and they haven't aged a day, I can tell you that much. The blonde said as he laughed heartily. Mai couldn't help but be inquisitive now her stomach more than envious for some decent food since her departure from her estate, the only good thing about it being the royal delicacies. What exactly have you made, Naruto? If you would let us, I'd like to try some. Mai inquired curiously, a small smile tracing across the sage's lips. It's called miso soup my chan, it's a common meal to be had in the time I lived, but I suspected it wasn't so common in this time so I decided to make some up to liven the place up a bit. The recipe usually consists of 2 teaspoons of daishi granules, 4 cups of water, 3 tablespoons of miso paste, 8 ounces of diced silken tofu, and 2 cut up green onions, but fortunately for me I had larger table to serve so I made a lot more than I usually would. When I started cooking it attracted the noses of several of your hungry foot soldiers, who I suspect hadn't had their full of proper nutrition or were just literally sick of eating their current rations. So I grabbed the biggest pots I could find and started whipping up as much of the stuff as I could, and I think I've put a smile on their faces with my food, I can tell you that much. Naruto stated with a wide grin of his own at a job well done, as Ajala took note of at least 23 soldiers eagerly enjoying their meals. She had never seen the men eat before with such passion, it was almost a little unnerving given the solemn state of their usual appetites. They were talking to each other rather casually as they chatted back and forth about how today's cook, Ajala's guest of honor himself, had been a great customary improvement of their rations and stale recipes. As they noticed the princess's gaze watching, they quieted down a bit out of nervousness, something Tai Li couldn't help but chuckle at. Ajala turned to face them with a demanding sort of look, a small smirk present on her face. Men. I'd like your attention please. The guest of this vessel and my new companion, 
Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze has given this deck the unexpected honor of having a new cook with even newer meals to be had. In a moment of clarity and respect for what he had done, I'd like you to voice your opinions on his dish, I expect nothing but complete honesty, usually this is not how I operate this I can acknowledge, but I truly would like to know how this tastes to you fine soldiers. Ajala loudly stated, making sure all the soldiers could hear her and take immediate note of her demand. After a moment or two of silent, one nervous soldier stood with a mug in his hand, raising it towards the ceiling. Why why your highness, Princess Ajala, if I am may speak freely as you have asked us to, this is some of the best food I've tasted in my line of duty. The soldier stuttered, afraid that anything he said the princess would punish him for. Another soldier stood up almost immediately after he finished his sentence, seeking to defend his ally from possible retribution. It's not our usual chef's fault though, given that more than half of the food he has to serve just comes from modifying our rations with a few spices that hardly make a difference in taste. The man you've brought on this vessel Princess Ajala is a fine cook, and he came with his own products to make us this rewarding meal. If only we could get stuff like this more often. Another man remarked. That would make serving in this navy a whole lot easier. Said another armored subordinate. Ajala crossed her arms lightly for the men to get the gist to silence themselves, which they did, and quickly went back to eating to not entice any possible wrath from their princess. Well Naruto, clearly many of the men on this ship are in your favor. What else did you add into this wonder soup of yours? Ajala asked in a half-joking manner. Naruto chuckled lightly, entertained with the fact that so many had begun to inquire about the contents of his meal. Well, I added some herbs and spices I collected from my time in N.A. no Kuni, the land of vegetables, which contained some of the finest ingredients in the entire world in my time. I added some parsley, a small hint of lemon and two small peppers for spice, I wasn't quite sure how the crew would react to it but I'm glad a lot of them seemed to enjoy it. You may have as much as you wish my ladies, I originally made this to be your breakfast to begin with. I just got carried away when so many hungry faces showed up. Naruto blushed slightly, rubbing the back of his head that cooking had become a slight passion of his when he had wandered the earth in search of purpose. Ah, that's so sweet of you Naruto, thanks for thinking of us. Tai Li commented, grabbing a nearby bowl and serving herself up some soup. Ajala and Mai soon followed, with the three bringing their respective meals to a nearby vacant table. As they all began to ingest the sage-made soup, needless to say all enjoyed their meals to a great degree. Upon the first spoonful Tai Li let out a small but noticeable squeal of euphoria, something Ajala and Mai had taken note of and chuckled over, with the golden-haired chef watching in amusement. Mai blushed slightly upon tasting the food, seeing why it had brought so much apparent joy to her acrobatic friend. Ajala herself also noted the richness of the taste. If this was a common meal from Naruto's time that he could make so well, she dared to think of what would happen if made an actual delicacy from the Fire Nation's past. Ajala and Mai both had two bowls to not try to appear gluttonous or overbearing in front of their new ally and friend, Tai Li however was not as modest and had four and a half bowls out of sheer want for the soup, to which Naruto laughed at and said that the more the person consumed from his time when a meal was offered to them was an act that honored the chef himself. After their bowls were emptied they passed them to Naruto, who was already cleaning the dishes left behind from several hungry soldiers that had already partaken in eating earlier. As the three waded back to their rooms they discussed with one another the contents of their meal and how Naruto seemed to be a genuine cook on top of things he already proved he could do. Tai Li sighed happily once she hid her bed as the trio reached their quarters, her stomach filled contently with miso soup. It wasn't more than 20 minutes later that Naruto returned, stretching his arms from having scrubbed at least three dozen bowls clean of miso grime. He sat down on his bed comfortably, and laid back for a moment to catch up on his thoughts. He wouldn't have time to rest long then, a certain pink-clad girl hovering over him as his one good eye widened in a bit of surprise. Why yes, Tai-chan? Is there something else I can do for you? Naruto asked as the pink girl just looked over him with a wide grin on his face. Nope, just looking at you that's all. I like your eye, eyes. I meant eyes. Your blue has a slit in it like a cat and your pale green one is pretty in its own way. Tai Li said as she tripped over her own sentences, 
not wanting to offend the half-blind man. Naruto chuckled softly as Mai and Ajala couldn't help but shake their heads at Tai Li's clumsy demeanor, knowing full well that such a compliment could be taken as a slight insult in direction to Naruto's distorted eye. Relax Tai Chan, no need tiptoe through the tulips. As I said before I came to terms with my half-blindness a long time ago, you don't need to apologize when you've done nothing wrong, comments about it don't actually bother me. And for the record, I like your eyes too, they always have a really pretty, bouncy look to them, they reflect your personality well. Naruto commented casually as he started to perform leg squats from his sitting position, earning a slight blush at Tai Li from the accidental comment. The trio remained silent for a while, an occasional chat arising from the boredom and silence every 10 minutes or so. Tai Li seemed to have the venture to the bathroom every 20 minutes to relieve herself, something Naruto half-jokingly commented on to Ajala and Mai that such a large consumption of miso soup would build up in a person's bladder quickly. A few more hours passed in which the group did roughly as much as they could to pass the time. Naruto engaged in a few rounds of chess with Mai, to which the score ended 1-2 with Mai as the victor, with the blonde claiming a few thousand years of being imprisoned most likely made him rusty. The sage also had meditated with Tai Li in his spare time, with Naruto a bit perplexed at how flexible the acrobat's body was, in which the uppity female would tell the boy tales of her time at the circus, to which Blonde responded that it sounded awesome. Ajala also asked Naruto for a moment of his time after he was done spending time with her friends, to which he was more than happy to grant audience for. The two talked of the oncoming battle, and what would occur after it. In Ajala's mind, if the battle was a success, to which she had the absolute determination that no other outcome would be acceptable, that after the victory Naruto should return with her following the Avatar's demise to personally meet her father the Fire Lord Oze to discuss future service to the Fire Nation. Naruto agreed wholeheartedly, claiming that his absence from his homeland was a time far too long, and he merely wished to protect his home which he failed to in the past, something the Fire Princess admired his patriotism for. Another hour or so passed that accompanied a grand amount of heavy sighs that were evidently out of boredom, mainly from Tai Li and Naruto with the desire to move and see things. Eventually, the blonde jumped off his bed, dusted himself off, and looked at his princess with determination in his eyes. Ajalaheim, if I may be so bold, I think I've spent all the time I can sitting still for a while. Between spending time with all of you, there really isn't much to do as we wait for the raid on the Northern Water Tribe to commence. Naruto commented casually, earning a nod in agreement from the Fire Princess. While it is most regrettable that there is little else to do in our time on board this vessel other than wait for what is to come, I'm afraid we cannot actually do much else until that point. Unless, you had a better idea, which I take it you do. Ajala practically smirked, earning a soft chuckle from the golden-haired man in response. Strange, we've been together for such a short amount of time and already you can read me like a book, you're a sharp one Ajalaheim. What I was planning was to teleport from this ship to the Northern Water Tribe itself, we're quite a distance away from it I know, but I should be able to land in a close vicinity to its actual location given that I only have to travel in one general direction to get there. Naruto commented, to which my and Tai Li both raised their eyebrows. What do you plan to do while you're there? You may be powerful, but I don't know if you can take on a whole tribe of elite waterbenders by yourself. Mai said nonchalantly. Mai's right Naruto, plus, not to offend you or anything, but your appearance is one that kind of draws attention, you don't exactly look like a common visitor. Tai Li added in, to which the blonde smirked at the statement in response. Why thank you Tai Li, I didn't know that my physical appearance drew so much attention, have you been watching me while I haven't been looking? Naruto half-jokingly replied, which in turn caused the acrobat to blush a light pink, much to Ajala's amusement and Mai's usual eye-rolling. While you do make an excellent point Tai-chan, I didn't exactly say that I'd be visiting as an enemy did I? My alias will be that of a foreigner, which they'll be inclined to believe due to my looks in comparison to their own people, my story will be that I had heard tales of the Avatar's return and had gotten wind where he was heading next, so I followed his route to have the honor to meet him. I won't cause any trouble while I'm at the tribe however, it unlikely they even know of our homeland's plan of attack and I'm sure you'd like to keep it that way, Ajalaheim. 
My name while I'm there will be the same as when I'm in your company Ajalaheim, I have no reason to hide my semblance of self, only my intentions and who I serve shall remain hidden. Think of this as not only a reconnaissance mission to see if they are aware of our impending arrival, but a way for me to pass the time in relation to out assault. I will also see how many children, sick and elderly are present at this encampment, if I am to serve my homeland once again, we should retain the honor we held once in the past, we do not kill those who cannot fight against us. Naruto finished in a determined tone, while Ajala raised an eyebrow in surprise to one of his following statements. While this sound like a worthwhile endeavor that I can approve of Naruto, I'm surprised that you'd limit your opponents with such sympathy in mind. I was always taught whoever is in the line of fire during war is fair game, apparently that is not so in your own mind. Ajala replied rather coldly, earning an even colder stare from Naruto in response. Ajala Haim, while I respect as the princess of my homeland and a newfound ally and friend of mine please know that the way I was introduced to war is apparently different than the wisdom your father or studies has placed upon you. I know that not everyone can be saved in war, that is an inevitability, please know that I will at least try to save those who pose no threat to us. In truth while I can take life rather easily through my power I do not relish in the ability to do so, there is usually little honor to be had in bloodshed, unless the person killed truly needed to be stopped and there was no other safe alternative but to kill him or her. I appeal to you though that whatever I find out in the Northern Water Tribe, it will not affect my loyalties to you or our homeland. While I can see the benefits in such a militaristic way of thinking, I can say without any hesitance that the cons far outweigh the pros. I know that your father the fire daimyo of this wishes to unite the four nations, and that within itself is an admirable goal, but some steps need to be taken in between so we do not stray from the honor of our nation itself. While I can recognize many will die in this battle, perhaps more than I wish to save, we should still look at all the alternatives possible, at the end of this war we should have the populace remember the people of Hinokuni as honorable warriors, not tyrants, or murderers. Naruto finished with an indomitable tone in his voice, as Ajala's stare at him changed from a small glare to eyes slightly widened at the tone of which her new friend was addressing her. He had pledged himself to her service, yet he was not afraid to voice his opinion, but he did so in a way that showed respect and little impudence towards her station, which was in itself a rarity seeing as so many were willing to count out to her with little of their own actual personality still evident. Mai and Tai Li were slightly afraid that Naruto's manner would still come off as too challenging or possibly as insulting to their royal friend, neither one of them wished to see such a promising ally who had become a reasonable companion thrown into the waters for insubordination. Very well Naruto, I admire that you feel to speak your mind so freely, yet you still seek to respect me at the same time. Report to me with what you find at the Northern Water Tribe, and I will make sure to inform Zhao of which areas our navy is not to target due to civilian populations. Ajala replied casually, shocking both of her female friends in the process. Naruto smiled sincerely while bowing to her out respect, shortly afterwards taking off his headband that bore a symbol of his language upon it, putting it softly in the hands of his princess, whose golden eyes looked up to meet Azure and Viridian. Keep this until I return Ajalaheim, think of it as a promise that I'll come back safely without question. After this battle is over, would you like to spar with me, firebending only? Even though you're my princess, you're still my friend, a round or two with you would probably be a pretty good fight. Naruto said while a small smile passed his lips, to which Ajala couldn't help but look up at him with a smirk of her own. If you think you can win that is. Ajala responded in a slightly combative manner, where Naruto couldn't help but chuckle slightly. I'm sure you'll be quite the challenge Ajala Haim, I'll be gone for about three days or so, but I'll be back safely so don't worry. The sage stated, walking over to his bed and pulling out a mask from one his duffel bags used to contain personal items. It bore a shade of a silver opaque, with three small slits at the bottom of it so he could not only breath but for others to see a small image of his lips. The shapes used to form eye holes were slanted ever so slightly, putting off a slight intimidating visage to the Azure and Viridian circles behind them. J-A-N-E, Azulaheim. And in an instant, the boy vanished into a swirling formation, the same technique he had used to transport them out of the ruins and have them arrive at the navy in only a few seconds flat. 
Ashila sighed slightly at the disappearance of her newfound companion, and tied the headband he had given her around her arm as a reminder that he would return. I'm surprised you listened to his plea about the civilian populace Ashila, usually if someone questioned a military raid on an operation like this it doesn't exactly suit well with royalty. Mai commented softly, knowing full well that the wrath of angered noble, especially that of one who knew firebending, could and usually would take its toll on the one who questioned them. She had known that her distant crush Zuko, Ajila's own older brother had once commented on a plan of attack similar to what Naruto himself had questioned, only to end up with one side of his face scarred for life by his own father for his supposed impudence. While your statement rings true in regards to my family and I would usually not tolerate questioning regarding hesitance in a military operation, we must remember that Naruto has proven himself a worthy ally and even greater warrior. As both you are aware, Naruto most likely has secrets of his own that can highly benefit the Fire Nation in destroying the legacy of the Avatar, uniting the four nations and helping us gain even more influence than we have already. I will not destroy such an opportunity when it is presented to me just because he stated his opinion. Regardless of what anyone has to say to my supposed leniency, Naruto has so far proven himself an ally and a friend to the three of us and more importantly, our homeland itself. Ashila stated in a matter-of-fact voice, earning a small grin from Tai Li who soon hovered over her friend with a certain aspect of mischief present in the air. Ashila narrowed her eyes in slight annoyance knowing full well Tai Li was most likely going to give her own output of the situation. Maybe you're being more lenient to him more than other people because you like him. Tai Li teased childishly, putting a severe amount of emphasis on the word like, to which Ajila rolled her eyes slightly in response while fighting back a very small blush. Please, it's been less than a day since we've met Naruto, it would hardly be logical to grow feelings for a man in such a short amount of time. Such relationships are only the aspect of fairy tales Tai Li. As I've stated before, I find his command of such unknown abilities intriguing, and I've already made it perfectly clear that his knowledge will help bring the war to end much quicker than we could have predicted, and hopefully unite the four nations while our own homeland grows in power like we could have only dreamed. Ajila retorted, huffing slightly to deter her acrobatic friend's pursuit of slowly depriving her patience. Su. You find his abilities intriguing eh? Or rather do you mean, you find him intriguing? Tai Li giggled, to which my face palmed at Tai Li's childish antics. Why must you consistently turn every word of mine into some perverse manner that implies an attraction towards Naruto? It's become increasingly obvious to nearly everyone in the vicinity that you yourself bear some kind of attraction towards Naruto's physical state and perhaps even a truer interest in his actual semblance of being rather than just a fling. Ajila said in hopes of turning the situation on Tai Li to halt her friend's antics. Tai Li just smiled and entered a playful meditation pose, still having her chocolate eyes concentrate on Ajila. While I will admit that Naruto is a bit of a looker and a pretty nice guy who's quite capable of many things in his own right, I wouldn't say I like like him so far. As you said, it's been less than a day since we've met him, I'd have to get to know him a lot more before I came to a conclusion that I actually have feelings for him. For the moment, if anything I find to be a very interesting person, I've never seen people do what he's capable of, and his personality is something of a mystery, which is always fun to unravel. Tai Li responded playfully. While I'll agree with you that he is indeed a very interesting person, how come when I give Naruto a bit of leniency you imply that such actions are done out of an attraction I have for him, while you've been more up in his face more than the three of us in the short time we've been together? Wouldn't that imply that you're the one who likes him, not me? I'm afraid your little fantasy scenario has a few plot holes in it Tai Li. Ajila said while chuckling slightly, still failing to deter the goofy smile from her friend's face. I've already stated the reasons why I don't like like Naruto yet. If I ever come to that is, which I personally feel may be a possibility in the future once I get to know him more. And to justify the supposed hypocrisy of the attraction between Naruto, you, and I, it's because I like to see you get flustered, it's just so unlike you, that's why it's so funny. Tai Li giggled while letting out a small snort, a small vein throbbing in Ajila's head out of frustration. Mai couldn't help but shake her head consistently being reminded of the similar circumstances of their childhood where Tai Li was often the comic foil to Ajila's rather cold demeanor. 
I hope you have fun out there Naruto, it'll probably be much more entertaining than watching Ajala strangle Tai Li for the umpteenth time. The dark girl thought drearily, as she herself started to drift off out of boredom. Meanwhile in the middle of the ocean, Naruto kicked his legs to maintain the balance needed to stay afloat in the freezing waters, which in terms to him weren't all that freezing due to the fact he could use the Kyuabai's chakra to keep him as warm as he would be in a sauna as he was in the water. God damn it, I think I undershot that teleportation sequence. The Jakukan Ito always was a bitch to master, still haven't gotten used to it. I honestly don't know how Madara team managed to get it down, maybe I should ask him, oh right, he's dead. Chuckles. Hey Karama, do you sense any good levels of chakra or chi nearby? If so, that's probably where the Northern Water Tribe encampment is located. I could home in on that with another Jakukan Ito use, but that might cause suspicion if I just appear right the hell out of nowhere in their home, not only that but it's not like that Jutsu has a low casting chakra maneuver, even with all the energy I have it can be a bitch to pull off with repeated use. Hey Kit, once you stop thinking to yourself I've got some news for you. I'm pretty damn sure I managed to locate the chi signatures of the Waterbender tribe, it's the only thing I'm able to pick up for miles from where we are, other than the occasional seal that is of course. Well that's good to hear, thanks Karama. How far are they from where we are now? I'd say about roughly a mile kit, if you don't want to poof out nowhere like that flashy Kaki Suzuki did during your Chinon exams I'd suggest paddling like a motherfucker in order to get there fast, I know my chakra can keep us both superheated like this water is nothing, but I really don't like to stay wet for too long. Why's that? Do you hate the water or something? I wouldn't say I hate it. I just grew an aversion to it, that's all. It remind me way too much when I spent three weeks in Kirigakur terrorizing the populace with Isabu, not that crushing you humans beneath my paws ever gets dull, but the feeling of constantly being wet grows rather tiresome. I honestly don't understand how that stupid turtle can take it, at the end of the seventh day I didn't feel dry for a month. Touching. I know right. So what's the plan when we get to this place anyway? Please tell me we get to fuck up their shit. Didn't you hear me tell Ajala that this is a reconnaissance mission? I was hoping you were joking, the little skirmish we had with those earthbenders, while a bit bloody, wasn't exactly enough satiate my appetite for violence, it's been far too long since we went on a killing spree. You're incorrigible. I know, but I'm the fucking Kyuabai, what do I care what you think? Can we at least show off for these people a bit? Blow their minds with what we're capable of? Maybe show them it doesn't take a supposed messiah to bend four elements at a whim. We don't want them getting too suspicious of our nature. But blowing people's minds in this time is the best part of getting to live again, their faces will never stop being priceless when they see our strengths. True, I'm sure I'll blow their minds more than once while I'm there anyway, I don't even think I'll have to try really hard anyway given the limited understanding of elements and non-existent knowledge of Jutsu. Sweet, watching these mortals soil their trousers never gets old, though it sure did leave a bad taste in my mouth when I devoured countless amounts of them. That's fucking disgusting Karama, why do you have to joke so lightheartedly about slaughtering literally thousands of my people, even if such events happened millennia ago? Because it's fun to butcher someone when they're most afraid of you. I really will never understand why you get off on killing. One of the many mysteries of life kit, now start swimming like Hashigaki used to. Roger that captain asshole, full speed ahead.